Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd habitu fillah We've reached the Naqid al-Rabi'a The fourth nullifier of Islam Where Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab Rahimahullah ta'ala said Al-Naqid al-Rabi'a Man i'taqida ana hadith غير النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أكمل من هدي من هدي أو أن حكم غيره أحسن من حكمه كالذي يفضل الحكم تواغيت على حكمه فهو كافر شيخ محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى said whoever believes that there is guidance more complete than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or that there is legislation better than his legislation like the person who prefers the legislation of the Tawaqeet to his legislation is a disbeliever. So here uh, Imam Muhammad ibn al-Duhab rahimahullah ta'ala is clarifying for us another common Naqid min nawaqid al-Islam, one of the nullifiers of Islam or nullifiers of Iman, which is to rule by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law, to rule by other than the Sharia. And so he says, whoever believes that there is guidance more complete than the Prophet wasallam, or that there is legislation better than his legislation, like the person who prefers the legislation of the Tawaqeet to his legislation is a disbeliever. So here, what I want to emphasize here is that the Imam is talking about the hukum or the ruling pertaining to the person who rules by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals. That this is the hal or the condition of this person not talking about the uh, another issue which is far and on this issue or which is a part of this issue or branches from this issue is the actual ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed but here he's talking about the condition of the person so what I want to emphasize he says men takeda men takeda whoever believes so this has to do with the iman of the person who is ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals. Whoever believes that there is guidance. So if they believe that there is guidance more complete than the Sharia, more complete than the guidance of, of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is an issue of their heart. This isn't the action of ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals. Uh, this is far'in on this mas'ala. This is another issue and that these issues are two separate issues. They both constitute major sin. They both constitute a form of disbelief. But there's a difference as there is major kufr and there is minor kufr. As there is major shirk and there is minor shirk. As there is major uh, major loom or oppression and there's minor oppression. When we refer to the major shirk and the major kufr, that means it takes you out of the fold of Islam. The person who does this, the general hukum, the general ruling, is that they have disbelieved in Islam. They have left Islam. Ridda. The person who does <coughs> the minor shirk or the minor kufr has not left the fold of Islam. So this is the difference between major and minor. Shaykh Muhammad ibn Wahhab here in this issue is talking about the person who does the major disbelief. And this disbelief is done by itiqad, by their belief. So whoever believes, this is what he says, and what it says in Arabic, مَنْ اَعْتَقِدَ in a hadith, غَيْرَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ أَكْمَلُوا مِنْ حَدِيهِ Whoever believes, an uh, issue of the heart is belief, uh, that there is guidance more complete than the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, or that there is legislation better than his legislation, and then on to the rest of his, his, uh, his statement. The evidence for this is that the one who holds this belief 
negates the fact that Muhammad sallallahu is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because this testimony Muhammad Rasulullah uh, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah uh, includes believing in what he prophesied and acting in a judge and judging according to his legislation what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam legislated what he said was halal and what he said was haram what is halal and haram in the Quran that's clear and adhering to his commands and staying away from what he prohibited and worshiping Allah according to his way and this is the statement of Sheikh Abdulaziz Al-Raji Hafizullah Ta'ala so this lets us know that when we say the Shahada that we are bearing witness not that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is just the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam but also it is like a pledge that you're pledging to follow him because when you say that he's the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that you're bearing witness to this fact that means you believe everything he comes he comes with it's not just a claim of he's the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that's sufficient but that means that you also believe that he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what he came with is the truth and what he prophesies is the truth and that his sunnah is the truth and that his sunnah is binding upon you meaning that you must follow it you must follow what the Prophet ﷺ came with so this is what it means when we take the Shahada the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ includes his methodology in propagating Islam this includes his methodology of teaching and manners and all the actions sayings and judgments that he made and left for his nation to follow. The Prophet Sallallahu Sunnah is revelation and it must be followed as it explains, as his, his Sunnah explains the Quran. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, and he does not speak from his desires, verily it is revelation that was revealed. Meaning that the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is revelation. It is also revelation, it is wahi. And this is the Aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah and where Ahl Sunnah differs with some of the other groups and sects especially those contemporary, very liberal, very modernist or, orient, uh, oriented uh, Muslims, some of them even being outside the fold of Islam because they totally negate the Sunnah. But those that I'm saying that are actually Muslim, that are in the fold of Islam, that have some ta'wil, that have some ignorance or whatever, perhaps they might have an excuse, that uh, this negates and this differs with their belief and their ideology because theirs is actually an ideology where we say ours is the belief of Islam it's the orthodox creed of Islam the creed of Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah but they have a belief which is an ideology it's something foreign to Islam it's like like you have communism you have liberalism you have modernism you have democratism uh, you have uh, all these isms uh, socialism these are all ideologies they are they resemble a system maybe uh, in part a way of life but Islam is complete uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Sunnah is revelation and it must be followed uh, Allah also commands us to follow the Prophet والسلام, and he says uh, and whatever the messenger came with follow and whatever he prohibits you uh, you should leave and this is in Surah Al-Hashr and this is in uh, the this is verse 7 in Surah, Surah Al-Hashr uh, that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala commands us to, to follow the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and take whatever he came with and leave that which he prohibits Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says وَعَتِيُوا اللَّهُ وَعَتِيُوا رُسُولُ uh, follow Allah or obey Allah and obey the Messenger the issue of ruling by other than uh, divine law uh, which is the Prophet ﷺ Sunnah is a very complex issue and we're going to talk about it in the most brief way and give us the malachis without getting into many many issues and it's a very complex issue but what we need to know with regards to studying this uh, this treatise Sheikh uh, al utaybi said uh, the one who rules by other than Allah's law does not fall into the major disbelief unless he believes the lawful to be unlawful or vice versa or disbelieves in divine law or denies it or prefers secular law to divine law or believes them to be equal or considers what he rules by to be a part of divine law 
and believes he has the right to rule by other than the divine law. So here he mentions several things uh, in which where a person falls into the major disbelief, leaves the fold of Islam by this ittiqad, if they believe that their, their law is better than divine law, better than the Sharia, is the same as the Sharia, or if they believe that it's permissible to rule by their law, even if they think the Sharia is better, but they think that it, theirs is actually legitimate, that all of these are means uh, to take a person out of the fold of Islam, they constitute the major disbelief. However, by ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, in general, this is a major sin, but it is not take you out of the fold of Islam. It is a type of kufr, yes, it's a type of disbelief, but not the major disbelief that takes you out of the fold of Islam. And this is in accordance with the uh, statement of Ibn Abbas, uh, which is well known, which uh, is that it is the kufr, uh, kufr dun kufr, meaning the lesser disbelief, the lesser form of disbelief. So, for example, if someone is a gambling, someone commits adultery, they're doing a major sin. That, and this is a type of ruling by other than what Allah revealed because they're doing what Allah has commanded to be prohibited. They're breaking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine law. Or the fact that, for example, in all Muslim lands they have riba banks. They, they do riba and they deal with riba, plain and simple. There are some Islamic institutions, but most institutions uh, deal with uh, uh, riba, which is unpermissible, and they allow it. But that does not mean that they legitimize it or that they believe it to be permissible. This is a type of sin. They may believe they're uh, out of weakness in, in the international banking system and kind of sub subverting their... Uh, desires or whatever the case may be that they allow this sin to go take place on their land that does not mean that they are uh, legitimizing and that they believe that this is uh, uh, permissible however they may allow it that this is sinful likewise in your household you may allow certain sins that take place you may not be as stern on everything and ruling by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. So this uh, shows us that ruling by what, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed is something that is incumbent upon the individual as well as the society, as well as the imam of the community. And that all of us have sins and shortcomings, but the fact that we commit sin and the fact that sometimes we rule by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed does not take us out of the fold, necess necessitate taking us out of the fold of Islam. It does necessitate that you've done a major, uh, when you do, when you rule by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, this is a type of kufr, but the general ruling is that it is the lesser of the kufr, meaning it doesn't take you out of the fold of Islam, you've done a major sin. The main issue that requires explanation, this involves making the lawful things in Islam unlawful by prohibiting them, and this is done when a person believes the lawful to be unlawful and acts in accordance with his desires. So this is when, uh, this is a mas'ala called uh, istihlal. When you make the lawful to be uh, unlawful, or you make the unlawful to be lawful, this is called istihlal. It means that you are uh, making what is prohibited to be prohibited. This also is, uh, is what takes a, a person out of the fold of Islam. Because uh, this has to do with your, your, your belief. This is an issue of etiquad, as Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah explained and we'll get to. This ruling of apostasy also applies to the individual who makes unlawful actions lawful, like the person who says fornication is permissible, or taking interest is lawful. When these are known to be forbidden, action Islam, actions in Islam by consensus. There's no one who negates that fornication is, is, is um, impermissible. This is clear from the Quran, clear from the Sunnah, clear from the Ijma, the consensus of the Muslim com community, Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The person who negates that, if they don't have the excuse of total ignorance, like a new Muslim, for example, who doesn't know anything about Islam except they're learning about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they learn something about Tawheed and they embrace, his, embrace Islam. Then of course, and he has a girlfriend, he said, this is permissible because I, 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 you know, I, I, he doesn't know. Then this, of course, you establish the hukum, you clarify for them and teach them. So that way they know that this is not permissible. 
so that if they continue to do the sin, they know and they don't do it out of belief that what they're doing is permissible. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Or do they have partners with Allah who have instituted for them a religion which Allah has not ordained? Uh, surah al-Shura. And this is verse the first verse in, in that surah. Ibn Kathir says regarding this verse, uh, They do not follow what Allah has legislated for you from his straight religion. But instead they follow what their devils amongst the jinn and mankind have legislated for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, they took their rabbis and monks to be their lords besides Allah and the Messiah, uh, son of Maryam, while they were commanded to worship one God alone. None has the right to be worshipped except him. Praise and glory be to him. Far removed is he from having the partners they associate with him. And this is Surah, Surah Toba, uh, verse 31. So once, uh, so this uh, lets us know the importance of the Tawheed and the Tawheed in legislation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord and the lawgiver. This is his hakamiya. And that along with that, that this verse illustrates for us that the that there were a group from amongst the monks and the priests uh, and the, the rabbis who took who legislated by other than what Allah revealed, they gave their fatwa, which went against the uh, the Injil and the books that were revealed to them. So they knew the, the law, but they went against the divine law and had the people, and the people believed them and followed them in their sinfulness and in their new legislation, which was negating what Allah had revealed to them. Uh, once while Allah's Messenger وسلم, was reciting this verse, Adi bin Hatim said, O oh, Allah's Messenger, وسلم, they do not worship them, because he was from that Ummah. So he said, They don't worship them when the Messenger of Allah وسلم, read this verse. Allah's Messenger وسلم, replied and said, They certainly do. And they legislated, meaning uh, they legislated laws that conflict with divine laws. And this is an infringement of Allah's lordship and sole right to legislate. So this is shirk in the rububiyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was shirk in the lordship. This is a violation of tawheed al rububiyah the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine sovereignty as the sole legislator subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the Messengers as it was revealed to them and they operated by wahi, by revelation. So the issue of ruling by other than divine law which Allah, uh, is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sunnah is uh, a very complex issue but one of the main things that we want to concern ourselves with in order to simplify this is that uh, the issue of itikad, of belief, that when a person uh, believes that they're ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has revealed, that means they are making it lawful. This istihlal is by making it lawful. It's not just doing the action. There are some other details that some of the imams of Ahl Sunnah have, have mentioned regarding this, but I don't want to get too deep into the complexity of those issues unless there are questions for those people who have a higher understanding of these issues who want more details and want to uh, have a munakisha or some sort of discussion about some of these more intricate details. But what we need to know is the basic hukum is that it is a, that is a, it's, it's an obligation to rule by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed and that just simply doing acts which contradict the Sharia or legislating acts which contradict the Sharia does not take a person out of the fold of Islam, but there are many other details pertinent to that. Uh, Imam Abu Ya'la said, whoever believes in the permissibility of something, Allah, uh, some permissibility of something Allah has prohibited by clear evidence or his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
uh, or declared prohibited by the consensus of the Muslims, then he is a disbeliever. Meaning, whoever believes in the permissibility of something that is prohibited by Allah or prohibited uh, and prohibited by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because what Allah prohibits, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prohibited. Or that has been declared prohibited by the consensus, the ijma of the ulama, then this person by di by declaring otherwise has disbelieved. By them believing, not by just simply doing or making a law because of weakness, because of some political maslaha and they were weak or they, uh, they had fear of someone else or whatever the case may be or through bribery, through greed and corruption. These things are a wicked sin, major sins, that the person should feel sorrow and make toba and leave, but they do not necessitate them being disbeliever. And this is what differentiates the creed with regards to this issue of Ahl Sunnah versus the people of Tikfir. Uh, with regards to this issue, uh, Imam Abu Ya'la, so he then he said, uh, like the one, he gave an example, like the one who makes it permissible to drink alcohol and prohibits prayer, fasting, and zakat. Likewise, a person who believes something to be unlawful that Allah or his messenger وسلم, have made lawful and permissible by clear textual proof or clear textual evidence or the Muslim community has consensus on and some uh, has consensus on and the individual has knowledge of its permissibility and still prohibits it, then he is a disbeliever. So it's very important that these are the statements of the Salaf that look at this that he mentioned that uh, contradicting the consensus uh, or what is clear from the Quran, the Sunnah. We're talking about clear. We're not talking about the verses that have... Uh, the, we're talking about the muhkamat, not the shubahat or the, 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 the verses which are more ambiguous in their meaning or not clear law, uh, laws in the Sharia. But those things which are clear, and then someone negates that and believes it's permissible to, to do something which is impermissible, clearly from the Sharia, then this is disbelief which takes you out of the fold of Islam, uh, fold of Islam as long as they understand this. And this goes back to what we we're talking about in the issues of Tikfir, about uh, the excuse of ignorance or the excuse of... You know, if those prohibited prohibitors of takfir are not in place, for example, the person who is totally jahil of this hukum, you know, the person who comes from a, uh, even, for example, some places in India or some villages in in in, uh, in various countries in Africa or Bangla some places in Bangladesh where there may not have been ulama to transfer that knowledge. The people may have embraced Islam for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, but they did not have the ability to reach scholars. Scholars did not go to those particular villages, and the, their vision and understanding of Islam was closer to what the Hindus did. Then these people, you would not just rush and make takfir that they would need to be made clear for them. So they have the, the, perhaps the excuse of ignorance, or the excuse of ta'wil, of uh, misconstruing the textual evidences. And as I said, the scholars, uh, some of the scholars of Ahl Sunnah have differed with regards to these issues, and these are very intricate, detailed issues, but I'm trying to give you what I believe to be the, the strongest statement, and that is, as uh, is, is very clear, that the scholars mention that you must establish the, the hujjah before making takfir. The Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says this all throughout his books. Uh, many of the scholars they 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 agree on this, but they agree disagree over certain specific details. Whether they have to understand the the proof, or whether they it's simply simple enough just to establish the proof. And of course, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows best. And I take the view that they must understand what's being presented to them. You can't just say something to someone in Arabic and they don't know the Arabic language and say I establish the proof for them, or reading the Quran in Arabic to them and they don't even know what the Arabic language. Uh, they don't know the Arabic language uh, and, the, and the meaning of the verses and then you say I establish the proof on them they should believe no I, I, I hold the view that they must that it's uh, 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 that understand the hujah but like I said these are very intricate details 
uh, detailed uh, masail uh, that we leave for the ulama to debate and we are not necessarily required to go into the depth of those issues. Some of the more contemporary scholars of Ahl Sunnah, like Imam Fozan, he states, so apostasy is not pronounced on everyone who rules by other than what Allah has revealed. Instead, there are details in this matter between whoever sees that ruling by other than Allah's laws is better or the same as any other law, or that there is a choice between ruling by Islamic law or not, then this one is judged as a disbeliever outside of the fold of Islam. And this has to do with the details we've already explained. Uh, ben Baz, another one of our great imams of the sunnah of this time, uh, mentioned about this issue. He said, uh, <clears throat> he described the one who does not rule by Allah's law as being a disbeliever if he believes the common law he uses to be better than divine law. Likewise, the one who believes it is permissible to rule by another law apart from Islamic law is also a disbeliever, even if he believes Islamic law is better. However, Bin Baz held that the one who rules from his desires uh, or out of fear, making judgment judgments to please others based on bribery or for some other reason, that this is a, ma is a major sinner, but still in the fold of Islam. In addition, Bin Baz made a condition that this ruler knows he is disobedient to a law and that it is obligatory upon him to rule by Allah's law. So this is uh, the statement of Ibn Baz. So uh, to give us a, a clarity of this issue, for example, many of us who lived in Muslim lands, Yemen used to have uh, many, many of the lands, uh, but I'll single out Yemen because I lived there and I've dealt with this unfortunately where I had a legal permission to leave the country but I still had to pay bribes in order to uh, to get my visa to leave the, the, the country. And so you've had those situations where you have a government official sitting with his hand out in your face or under the table, and if you don't pass that money, you will not be able to leave the country, or you will not get a visa to leave the country or to stay in the country or whatever the case may be. And so this, you would not make tikfir of this individual. You would not make tikfir of this individual uh, without, of course, establishing the proof. They know what they're doing is corrupt, but it's just such widespread practice. It's usually done out of greed and corruption, but not because they feel that what they're doing is permissible or that it is better. And again, this would be an, a, a matter of the heart, and this would be something you establish the proof, and this would be for the reserve for the Islamic judges. And this cuts the, the rope of, tech, uh, of making takfir easily. Unlike those other groups like Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Boko Haram, uh, Al-Shabaab, and, and many other Takfiri groups where they don't usually view any of those things. They say that ruling by Allah's law, plain and simple, without any details, they make Takfir of you. And they will kill you. Because on that, you know, once they do that, they make your blood lawful. They say you're no longer a believer and they will behead you. How many issues of Takfir? Even they made Takfir of those people who were other groups who had their... Uh, ISIS made takfir of Al-Qaeda in many times and they fought and killed each other in Syria and in other places around the world. In Afghanistan, the Taliban and ISIS fight and kill each other. And they have a rivalry with Al-Qaeda and ISIS. And they make takfir of one another. They don't feel, they don't believe one another are be uh, believers. And this is because they don't uh, recognize any of those details that the ulama of Ahl Sunnah in the past and in the present have left for us uh, and detailed for us about these very complex uh, issues. Uh, Imam al Wadi, our, our, our Imam uh, in Yemen, Allah Yarhamahu, uh, another contemporary scholar of Hadith said if someone makes permissible what Allah has made lawful, unlawful, and he is knowledgeable, of what he does, and he is not forced, then he disbelieves. Whoever makes judgments due to bribery has not become a disbeliever, but he has committed a major sin. This is what Imam al wadi said. An important detail regarding the issue of decreeing something lawful to be unlawful is the fact that it has to do with one's belief, as we mentioned. Uh, Ibn al-Qayyim said, then the issue of making something lawful is doing something believing it to be lawful. So this is what Ibn al-Qayyim said. Again, he emphasized believing. 
believing it to be lawful. It isn't just doing this act, doing, uh, for example, any sin or any ruling, in fact. Okay, say if, if you, people who are very caught up on this issue, they want to talk about just rulership, okay, not just sin. When a judge has you before their court and he wants uh, bribery, he is ruling by other than, he knows, if he knows the haq, he is ruling by other than what Allah revealed. He is going in favor of whoever pays the most money, even if he knows the other person is correct, or he's not even looking into that issue. He just wants the money. This is out of greed, and this is ruling, this is a type of rulership by other than what Allah revealed. So do we make takfir of him right off the get-go? No. Uh, it, it depends on the how or the condition of that judge. Is he doing it? Does he believe that what he's doing is lawful or not? Uh, is he doing it out of fear or he's doing it just out of greed? This is, he is ruling, he's doing a, an act of kufr because he knows the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but corruption and greed has overtaken him. So this is why it's very important to look, to distinguish between the issue of ruling by what, uh, other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed and the individual who rules by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. Uh, Ibn al-Qayyim said, uh, so we mentioned the statement of Ibn al-Qayyim, the last thing, uh, this illustrates the difference between Ahlul Sunnah and the Khawarij and the contemporary Takfiris, who believe that recurrent sinfulness is making a transgression permissible. So meaning that they believe that uh, these contemporary Takfiri groups believe that if you continue to do sin, you continue to rule by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, by other than what uh, the divine law, other than the Sharia, that you are a disbeliever by continuing to do it. Ahlul Sunnah says, no, it is not uh, continual, but that could be evidence of what's in the heart. But again, that is the, the issue. The issue comes down to their belief in this, uh, uh, whether they believe what they're doing is permissible. Uh, are they doing it just out of continual corruption and greed and whatever, but they don't believe what they're doing is permissible and they don't believe what they're doing is better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law. This, these are the issues, and this is why it's a, these are complex issues, because if it was such an easy black and white issue as the tech video makes, they would be lopping off heads of ev everyone. There would be heads lopped off as we see the bloodshed of what ISIS and other groups like that, when they come into power, what they do. The corruption that they spread, the facade that they spread, the picture of Islam that they, dis that they propagate, which is a distortion of Islam. Because for them, Islam is blood. For them, it is clearly that everything is clearly black and white and kufr iman, cutting, killing, uh, and, and so forth, which is a type of wickedness that Allah did not reveal. Uh, we'll end by this statement by Sheikh Al-Tabi. He said, no one from the early scholars understood repetition of sin to be istihlal. So, uh, and if they had, they would have established this understanding before us. So this is a very important statement, and why I ended with that statement, is that the early scholars, we don't have any evidence to show that recurring in sin, that that means that this person is making it lawful. But rather, uh, this is still that they're maybe ruling by other than what Allah revealed, they're doing a continuous sin, and it could be evidence for what's in their heart, but again, it goes back, it boils down to what's in their heart. What do they believe? Do they believe what they're doing is uh, lawful? For example, the person who knows the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they said, I am going to, I need this house. I'm going to take a bank loan and it's based on interest. And I know interest is impermissible. So aren't they making a judgment which is uh, based Contrary to the Sharia? Yes. Is this a major sin? Yes. Is this uh, a ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed? Perhaps. Or this could be doing a sin. It depends on the wudge, on how we look at this issue. But are they making it lawful? No. But if, but the, the same picture, if someone says, I'm going to buy a house because one house is permissible for me, as we see these fatwa, that this is a very dangerous fatwa which goes around in the West. We find uh, different supposed muftis, usually of the Diobandi uh, creed, 
that they make these fatwa that is permissible to get one house on interest. As long as it's on one because it's a necessity, because you don't need to buy. Perhaps they might have ta'wil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best that they are doing a major sin, but that they do not disbelieve. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. This is my uh, assumption with this. Is that because of the ta'wil, because they actually believe that they are using another principle, which is that this is some sort of necessity, that this is uh, a force or a necessity. But in fact, the ulama of the past, they define necessity to be uh, with regards to life and death situation. So this is not a life death situation, you paying rent of an apartment versus having ownership of a house. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, and I hope that was not too confusing. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct, Allah Anything I said that was incorrect, for myself and the shaitan, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala Muhammad.